Hello, hello, hello and welcome to my podcast. My name is Katie. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know I've been covering the murder case of Eric Rishins. There's been no updates in any of the criminal or civil lawsuits this week. So we can actually venture into one of my other interests, which is history or history. Today we will be discussing Hypatia, a feminist icon and universal genius. You may not have heard of this woman, I hadn't, but she should be better known than she is. But before we start, I'd ask you to like this episode and subscribe to my podcast wherever it is you are listening. If you can hear Screaming, that is one of my cats calling for my attention. I apologise. He's had all day to scream and he's doing it now whilst I'm recording. Anywho. There is also a disclaimer with this episode. I will probably mispronounce names. Apologies in advance. And we will also be discussing... A gruesome death, so if that's not your thing, tap out of this one. Bear with. Sorry, I I just had to go and tell my cat to shush. Right, okay, so. If you're ready, we'll begin our story. Hypatia was the daughter of the mathematician known as Theon of Alexandria. There's no exact date for Hypatia's birth, but it is estimated to be between 350 and 370 AD in Alexandria, Egypt. There's not much more known about her childhood, unfortunately. But what we do know about her is both inspiring and tragic. Hypatia lectured on Plato and Aristotle, teaching philosophy and astronomy in the city of knowledge known as Alexandria. She taught her students how to construct a silver plane astrolabe, which is a device that is used to calculate date and time based on the position of the stars and planets. The invention of the astrolabe has been attributed to a few different people, and I can't figure out which one is right, but it is said to have been invented between 225 and 150 BC during the period of the Hellenistic civilization, If you happen to know who invented the astrolabe, please let me know in the comments, because I saw, I think it was at least three different names. So I'd like to know who it was. But Hypatia taught her students how to make one of those and how to use one of those. In her time, Hypatia was considered the world's leading mathematician and astronomer. This is the only woman for whom such a claim can be made. During her lifetime, she was considered a leading mathematician and astronomer. Even today, we struggle to get women recognised in science and maths, but Hypatia was getting recognised during her lifetime, way back when. Synesius, the Bishop of Ptolemy, who was previously a student of Hypatia, described her as, quote, a person so renowned, her reputation seemed literally incredible. We have seen and heard for ourselves, she who honourably presides over the mysteries of philosophy, end quote. Hypatia is probably the first female mathematician whose life is somewhat recorded. There are many works that have been linked to her But as with other female philosophers from ancient history, it's hard to establish authorship. At the time that Hypatia was living in Alexandria, it was a cosmopolitan city of different religions and races. It is thought that Hypatia was probably pagan. There is no record of her being married, but there is a story that she tried to discourage any potential suitors by playing the lute, presumably She must have been a very bad lute player. But when this refusal didn't work, Hypatia said no. And she displayed her bloody menstrual rags, declaring, 
This is what you really love, my young man, but you do not love beauty for its own sake. I mean, it's one way of putting people off, I guess. One scholar, Damasius, further relates that one young man was so traumatised by that display that he abandoned his desires for her immediately. During Hypatia's lifetime, religious tensions were starting to build in Alexandria. Cyril of Alexandria, as he became known, the Patriarch of Alexandria, started closing all the pagan temples and Jewish synagogues, confiscating their property. 7th century Egyptian Coptic bishop John of Niku alleged in his chronicle that Hypatia was engaged in satanic practices. Because of course she was, she was a woman with a brain. Anywho, quote, there appeared in Alexandria a female philosopher, a pagan named Hypatia, and she was devoted at all times to magic, astrolabes, and instruments of music, and she beguiled many people and she beguiled many people through her satanic wiles. End quote. He also insinuated that her close relationship with Governor Theophilus had caused this governor to stop going to church. That's how influential he thought Hypatia was. Maybe the dude just didn't want to go to church. In March 415 AD, a Christian mob raided Hypatia's carriage as she was on her way home. They dragged her into a former pagan temple, which was now a Christian church, stripped her naked and beat her to death with bricks and stones. Some sources add that, warning, they removed her eyes. Once Hypatia had passed, they tore her body limb from limb, dragging the pieces through the town and then setting them alight. Hypatia would have been between 45 and 65 years old at the time of her death. Throughout history, philosophers were effectively untouchable, so this murder sent shockwaves through the ancient world. Her death may have been politically motivated, as she was accused of meddling with political relationships. There is also a suggestion that Hypatia was involved in the controversial idea that the date that they had celebrated Easter that year was wrong. This may have been another reason for the Christian invaders to hate this overreaching woman. Her death may also have been just a random murder in Alexandria. There is no evidence that Cyril of Alexandria was to blame for Hypatia's death, but it is widely speculated that he ordered it. Coincidentally, later on in the early 420s AD, Cyril dominated the Alexandrian council. He is known to history as St Cyril of Alexandria, patriarch and confessor. This religious bigot and alleged murderer was canonised. Makes you wonder how many other saints were questionable. Her death transformed Hypatia into a martyr for philosophy. Her untimely demise has made her a powerful feminist symbol and a figure of affirmation for intellectual endeavour in the face of ignorant prejudice. That was the story of Hypatia, a martyr to philosophy, feminist icon, universal genius who should be known more. But like a lot of women from history, they just don't exist. I can't remember the, who said it, but throughout history, anonymous was usually a woman. If you found this interesting, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, etc. It would help me get my podcast out and about. History is one of my passions. I find it absolutely fascinating. I hope to do more in regards to historical topics as well as current affairs. So if all of that sounds like something you're interested in, subscribe and turn on the notifications. I am unreliable in my uploading, which is why the notification bell should be turned on. I will leave a link below to where you can find some information about Hypatia, should you wish to venture more.
into trying to find out about her. It's, and if you're just listening to this on Spotify, there is an image on my YouTube channel of, of what they suspect Hypatia may have looked like. I will be keeping an eye on the Eric Quitchins murder case. Any Anything that comes up in that, I will do an upload. And also the civil cases surrounding that, again, anything comes out, I will do an upload. If you want to read any of the documents that have come out for that case, they are in the episode descriptions of that playlist. This is my history playlist. That is my Eric Richards murder case playlist. I have rambled on for far too long, so I will let you get on with your day. I appreciate you listening. Thank you very much. And I will speak to you in the next one. Bye.